Finally, we can see memory temps on HiveOS. But the slide is a homicide. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Now today, I wanted to show you guys how we can finally get the memory temperatures on your GPUs using HiveOS. Now, previously you could only do this on Windows and it's kind of a hassle, you know, switching between uh, HiveOS and Windows just to see the uh, memory temperature. So right now you can only see um, the uh, temperature of the GPU, but you can't really see the memory temperature as that's something that uh, will determine if your card is thermal throttling or not and you obviously don't want to damage the card in any ways now g miner recently came out with another um an update actually and if you're to switch your rigs to g miner you're actually able to see both the core temps and the memory temps uh over there as you can see i have all of mine's uh under 94 and that's for my 3090s and what we're going to do is we're going to see the check the actual memory temperatures on this specific card and uh show you guys through the process all right so let me show you guys what we're working with so this 3090 right here is this evga for the win 3 and this is sitting on my test rig so that's why it's uh by itself as you can see we are, these are the overclocks and this is the mega hash um, i dropped it down a little bit uh, just to kind of test out Gminer to see what I would get uh, using Gminer. Right now we're only using NB Miner um, on our flight sheets, but we're gonna go ahead and change that. Uh, just note this temperature here, 53 degrees, and I'm gonna show you guys how we can actually see the memory temperature as that's more um, more important uh, than this. Uh, fans are at 75%, so we're gonna keep that for now. And so all you're gonna do is uh, let's start at the very beginning. All right, so this is our three rigs right now, 800 mega hash. And what we're gonna do here is actually go on flight sheets. Now, to get Gminer, it's very, very simple. You just put your normal Ethereum coin here and whatever wallet, uh, ETH wallet that you that you have, the ETH address. Pool, you're just gonna select two miners or whatever miner that you want. Um, the pool itself uh, doesn't really, really matter. This is what mine is, the actual miner, okay? So again, this is just a pool. This is the actual uh, miner. So we were essentially using NB miner. All we're gonna do is search for G miner. All right, and set up config. This is in case you have, um, I don't know, LHR cards, or you want to specifically do something to, um, you know, have three cards running on one coin and another card on a different coin. Um, but that doesn't matter to me. This is only one, one card right now. Um, whatever flight sheet you currently have, just uh, input all the same values here. So I'm just going to keep it as G minor as default and naming, I'm going to call this test flight sheet. So test FS and all you can do is create flight sheet. Okay. So we have it here, test FS. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, launch this on our uh, mining rig. So just going back to Hive OS, I'm gonna look for the solo card, which is this one. So this is the 3090, that's that one over there. And it's still on NB miner. All you gotta do is go on flight sheet and look for the test FS that we have. So right here. And all you're gonna do is launch the spaceship. All right, so the card is now on um, G miner. And to actually access it, if you look here, it doesn't show you the temp. So I believe HiveOS is gonna come with an update to show you the memory temp beside it. But so far we don't see that right now. So what you have to do is go on a shell command. So somewhere at the top here, this is what you're gonna be looking for, remote access, Hive shell start. And you'll see this, just wait for this to uh, kind of load. So this can take uh, a few seconds. Just wait for this to finish, click on it and then click on the link. So this is the link. And once you get to this screen, all you gotta do is type the word miner, press enter. And then now you can see everything. So over here, 52 degrees uh, is the uh, temperature of the card and 94 is the memory temperature. Now you wanna make sure it's uh, between 95 to I'd say 90, 
uh, or even 100, 102. Um, usually when it goes to 110 or above, it will turn red and thermal throttle. Um, so at this temperature, it is fine. I was actually testing or playing around with this for quite a bit. And going back to our card, if you notice the memory temp, I put it as 2200. Um, I believe before I set it as 24, um, but that will increase. And let me just show you guys what I mean by that. So right now, again, we are at 94 degrees. And all I'm gonna do is change this to 2400. Okay, cool. Now we're just gonna wait and we should see an update. Yep. So it's now 96. 121 mega hash, right? At 96 on the memory temp. So the actual uh, core temperature of the card did not change at all, but the memory temperature did. And we should actually see this increase to maybe 98, I think, or 100. Um, and below 100 is great. Uh, as you can see, anything above 95 will turn to yellow. And that's just kind of G minor tell telling you that um, the card is running a bit hot. Once it turns red, so that's, um, 110 or above um, that means it's pretty much gonna cause damage to the card and you should definitely reduce the memory temperature to bring this down what you can actually do is is to go on your fan and right now we have we have it at 75 uh, if you're to just change it to I don't know maybe uh, 100 right and I'm not gonna keep this to 100 for a long time just uh, just for a few one or two minutes so you can see the difference just go ahead and click apply Now going back here, uh, we have it as 96. We should see this change uh, along with the 75% fan. The fans just kicked in, they should be much louder now. Fans at 92%, we're just gonna wait until this, hit, uh, this hits 100. And you'll also see that this actually drops down as well, the memory temperature, yeah. So as you can see now, we are at 100% fan and the memory temperature did drop uh, after putting uh, the fans up a little bit. So it's now 94. And um, just going to just check how much mega hash we have. We have 122. Um, I don't really feel comfortable leaving it at 100% fan. As you can tell, it's actually very, very loud as well. So what I'm gonna do is uh, return this back to 75 for now. Keep it 75 and actually reduce the uh, overclocks as well. So instead of 2400, let's keep it at 20, let's say 2300. Click apply. And yeah, so overall, that's basically how you can check your uh, memory temp on Hive OS using G Miner. Again, you have to remote into uh, your mining rig using the miner command, and then you'll be able to see it here. And yeah, so this is so this is my other rig, um, the one that's in the garage. So it has four cards. I, as you can see, all of them are below 94. So my 3090, my two 3080 Ti's, uh, 80 and 78, and another 3090, 94. When I actually first looked at this uh, rig, this 3090 was at I think it was 100, 102 degrees, right? And uh, now it's 94 only because I increased the fan to 90%. Previously it was 70. Uh, and yeah, I wasn't too comfortable. And knowing that the card was at 102 degrees, it kind of made sense because uh, this rig would always crash. And it, uh, it would always say, you know, GPU number three was the one that's causing the errors. But looking at it, I noticed that the, um, the core temperature of the card wasn't actually that high. And because the core temperature was never high, I never assumed that it was the um, memory overclocks, right? Because I, I set them pretty low, actually. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.